And then there were four. Four different entities that want to buy Chelsea Football Club. And apparently, allegedly, the one that we most want, the Saudi media group, they're not in it. Welcome to the Gafka, as you guys. And today's video is an insightful one. Today's video, low-key might be an upsetting one, but it's the reality. It's the fact that the matter is that we have to accept it. And we need to move on. And we need to pick the best, worst outcome. At the end of the day, the four entities that were selected, and this isn't reported yet, because there are reports coming out that no Nobody knows. Matt Law is saying that nobody knows. Rain Group have not informed the owners, the uh, journalists, nobody. The decision has not been made. But there are sources like The Athletic coming out with the names per se of who are being considered at, in the final four shortlist. They're not going to like these. But let's get into the video. Before we get started, I need you guys to do me a massive favor. The bare minimum I expect on this video is 500 likes. Look, you're all nice people. You're all here. You're all laughing at my pain or being in pain with me. So hit the like button, aim for 500 likes on this video. It goes a country mile from every single one of you. It's free of charge. If you're number six, just put number six in the comment. If you're number 66, put number 66 in the comment. It's very simple. Let's get on with the video. One thing for certain, and it's been reiterated by numerous sources, is that Roman Abramovich will have a say. Will he have the definitive say? No, he won't. The definitive say will remain with the Rain Group Investment Fund. They will be making the decision. Then you start looking at Bruce Buck, Marina Garavskaeva, and Roman Abramovich to have an input on what's going to happen and which entity will be brought forward for vetting via the government of the UK. Vetting is when they do a deep dive into these entities and see where the money's coming from, what they do for a living, just a quick background check, a quick CRB, you know, a little cheeky one. But the three categories that Chelsea want in owners, and this is confirmed, right? A proven record, a vision to continue winning, and easy access to funds to reinvest into teams. Saudi media groups sound perfect for that. The thing that I think is letting Saudi media group down is the vetting process is going to take too long. The vetting process is going to drag the club out and the players are potentially not going to get salt paid, which will lead for the club to go into administration in a nine point deduction. I don't think Roman wants that. I don't think Chelsea want that. And I know the fans don't want that. We're not clear enough away from the top four to allow that to happen and then risk the financial deficit of missing out on the Champions League. So as of this moment, it looks like they're out of the running. But like I said already, this is not confirmed and I need you guys to listen to this video, okay? They are not confirming this to be the case. Matt Law, Nazir Cancela, all reputable journalists have come out and reiterated they don't know anything. The only source that's openly put their neck on the line and put four entities forward is The Athletic. The Athletic is the only entity that has reported this. The rest are silent. The rest honestly are acting like they don't know. Sky Sports aren't even mentioning the Saudi media group. It's really blowing my mind. There are alternative campaigns going on now. The Chelsea Social Trust or whatever they're called, right? The C CST, they're absolutely running wild. They want the golden share. They're talking with the Ricketts family who are trying to buy the club and they're trying to get more power. And it's something that I need to cover. One thing we need to consider here, right? The CST, whatever they call themselves, they are an organization that, yes, they have golden shares, and yes, they have shares in Chelsea Football Club. They're trying to fight to gain more power. In every war, there are beneficiaries and there are people that suffer. And in this case, this is a cold war. And in this cold war, the beneficiaries are the C CST. Now, three months ago, they had by normal rights. All of a sudden, they're trying to put themselves front and center to the government, pleading and making demands of things they can impact that in essence, they shouldn't be able to impact. Who spends 2.5 billion on a toy? Because that's what the football club will be to an owner, a toy. It's where they relax, they will spend money on players, they will invest money. You don't make money out of football club. You do it for leisure purposes. When you have a hundred billion uh, pounds, this is what you do. This is your form of going to the gym. Sad but true. Don't kill the messenger. Yet these lot are trying to put demands across and this is not gonna work. I don't think this is a real realistic way of going forward. So let's get into what The Athletic have said. So The Athletic are reporting that four entities have been selected. Number one, it's Todd Bowley, the LA Dodgers. It's the one that we've spoken about heavily, dependent on analytics, very money ball approach, but at the same time, they are keen to keep the team competitive and winning. Number two, the Ricketts family, the Chicago Cubs. This is a no-no for me. 
you don't believe me, go and check my YouTube out. Uh, they Twitter out, you have seen my stance on this whole situation. I don't want this entity anywhere near my club. I think not a single Chelsea fan wants this entity anywhere near this football club. At this moment in time, the Ricketts family is the worst thing that could happen to Chelsea Football Club. I do not want them anywhere near us. I want them out of the thing. Then there's Sir Martin Broughton, something like that consortium. I don't know his name. I think this is a former uh, chairman of Liverpool Football Club. It's a bunch of billionaires that are all coming together to buy Chelsea within a UK consortium. And finally, there's the Woodley Johnson con consortium. There have been other entities that have been interested. The Nick Candy entity that we will talk about in detail. And there is Set Centris, the UK investment fund. That is a very interesting one as well. I don't want them realistically any anywhere near my club. An investment fund is not the way I want my club to be operated. An investment fund has one ideology. The one ideology is to build it up and flip it for a big asset. They won't care who they sell it to. They won't care the ramifications on the club. They won't care if we don't remain competitive. If it means they can flip it for a great profit, they will do it. You will know my stance on Nick Candy. I've not liked his approach to this whatsoever. Nick Candy has been very pressure point on the clubs. He's been very pressure point on the fans' desire to accept him as one of their own. Well, how can we accept you as one of our own? You're completely different to us. You're a billionaire trying to buy the club and using our weak point, our club, as the reason you're trying to buy it. You are painting a picture of you're with, with us in the struggle when really you're not. You're a billionaire trying to profit off this. That's that's why you're so open with what you're trying to do and now you've got the backing from a South Korean pension fund. And a lot of people like Alex is worth $800 billion, what are you talking about? They'll invest, they'll be excited for us to actively go proceed forward. No, that's not how it, pension funds work. Let me give you a quick breakdown of what happens, right? A pension fund for the government's pension fund as well more so is, is a pot of money that is going to be distributed to people when they retire. These people pay contributions. They pay money to the government to keep it, invest it. One way of investing it will be into a buy in Chelsea Football Club, protecting an asset. Chelsea Football Club will essentially be used as a vehicle that keeps that money safe because Chelsea is a good asset to hold. They have entity, uh, they have their money invested in multiple entities, as you can see. They are spread, they've diversified their portfolio brilliantly. So no matter what happens in the stock markets, it won't impact them directly too much. They are protected enough to look after the government's pension fund. So now, when they have to start matching these liabilities, when they have to pay out these people, all of a sudden, what's gonna happen with Chelsea Football Club if they need money urgently? Are they gonna sell it to the next bidder? Are they going to start selling players to take money out the club and put it back into their pension fund? No, we do not want to be in a situation like that. This is why I'm so pro one entity coming in, one entity <coughs> making decisions and one entity, we live and die by that sort. It is the safest way to go. What if they buy Nick Candy out? What if they give him a money that he can't refuse? Hypothetically, he invests 250 million. What if they give him 700 million and say, get out to own Chelsea by themselves without the other min minor investors? Think about it. It's too risky to trust a global entity that have got their own agendas above Chelsea. It doesn't work for me. Look guys, like I reiterated for all of you, every single one of you, we don't know what's happening right now. There's gonna be a lot of rumors coming in and out from different sources. Until it gets confirmed, we just need to remain positive. I just thought I'd give you guys an update. I didn't bring you one yesterday because there wasn't much. I'm not gonna come here and give you nonsense. I'm gonna come here and keep you updated as much as you can. This is two days worth of news. It's been quiet. There's no direct link on who's going to buy Chelsea. At this moment in time, like I said, to summarize, the Athletic have got four parties that they are keen and think they're ahead of the race. Then there's the Nick Candy, Centris, and media, uh, Saudi Media Group. Saudi Media Group is my choice. That's the one I want more than any. I really do, because I think they're going to help us rebuild the stadium, which they've already done with Al Halal. They're gonna help us remain competitive, and they're gonna help us by investing firmly into the club. Hopefully, logic prevails here and we get that. The last thing I want is us to be, end up with the Ricketts. I rather would go with Todd Bowley. Todd Bowley at least will have 
a statistical way of approaching things. There will be less trophies, I can guarantee you that right now. But at the same time, I think there's gonna be a method to his madness. And I know the club will be in safe-ish hands. So long may this continue, guys, in the sense that once we get sold and we are remain stable, because that's what we have been for 20 years. We've been ridiculously stable. We've not been in an exodus. We've always been competitive and Roman Abramovich has done us proud. But this was the Gaff Guys View. I hope you lot enjoyed this video. Hit a thumbs up, 500 likes, like I said earlier today, free 13,000. 13,000 of you have subscribed. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. It goes a long way. I really appreciate every single one of you. Peace out, I'm out. Love.